Well, today it's back to the clouds. I'm going to paint some clouds for you today, but not just any clouds. These are rim lit, side lit, kind of back lit, if you know what I mean. Well, you will before this is over. Yes, I know, you don't like sunny days. Well, I predict for you, cloudy with a chance of ridiculousness. All right, well, I thought I would do a cloudscape, and what I wanted to do is focus on a cloudscape that is edge lit or rim lit. Let me explain um, this kind of a cloud. This is a real good exercise in painting clouds and very dramatic if you're going to have a cloudscape where clouds are your feature. And what I'm specifically focusing on, uh, the difficult part of this kind of a cloud, are these rim lights, these edge highlights. Now these are very distinct. You don't have to paint them that distinct. I'm really thinking more in terms of, of just hot highlights. But what you have is a dark background sky. And I've got other examples. This is probably a better example of, of a dark sky or a vivid bright blue sky. Fairly dark clouds, but they're backlit, which is cool. It's really dramatic. Now you can mask that and paint these. I think clouds look a little too deliberate when you do that, a little too uh, forced. This is perhaps a little closer to what I was thinking. So uh, I will show you a method for doing this, and we're just going to have fun with it. And you may use this in a number of skies, but I'm thinking mostly of paintings where you feature a sky. And this can be done on the fly. I don't think you need to do any masking. It's, it's two main things, and that's paying close attention to values and protecting these highlights. All right, this is a Kilimanjaro block. I love using arches for skies, but uh, I didn't have a block of arches that was bright white. And because of the highlights that we're trying to get, I want a bright white paper. And the only bright white arches I have is in sheets. And I just wanted to grab a block real quick. So I'm fine with Kilimanjaro. We're gonna go with it. Bright white, I've got this, it's hard to see, but I've got this taped off. Got some color mixed up. This is cobalt blue and cerulean blue. And I've mixed in some Payne's gray. We're gonna start out by pre-wetting the entire page with clean water. I'm just using this uh, Sterling Edwards blending and glazing brush. I like to use it as a pre-wetter. Just wanna get the paper soaked. I'm not pressing. Just letting the brush glide over the paper because I don't wanna like pill it or anything or overbrush it. And I want to start out thinking in terms of negative painting the sky uh, and where the cloud shapes are going to be. And I'm going to leave those mostly white, completely white. All right, I'm going to pick this up too because I really need this to be done mostly flat. So these are the top edges of my clouds, and then down here are the bottom edges. I'm going to let those soften up into the clouds a little bit. And these edges up here are what I want to protect as my highlight edges, and these edges here. Again, you want to focus on the shape that this is going to be here. And these lower edges, this is where I'm bringing this Sterling Edwards brush. That can softly bring this up because this down here is not going to be an edge. Now there might be edges within the edges, just like the reference shows. But what I'm trying to do is differentiate between my soft edges and my uh, slightly harder edges. I'm going to do quite a lot while this is still wet. And here we got a edge overlapping an edge, and those overlaps are important. This is another case of we got an edge here, distinct edge, uh, but I want to kind of soften the edge above it as it moves up and gradates into that cloud. And then just Blending away from my edge, my edges. 
As the washes start to move less, you can figure out where you want to add a little extra contrast. Be careful not to get much water, additional water in there. You'll end up with a back run. I've got a fairly dry edge forming there, and that's okay. You can do that in places. I'm going to pick up, I think, this uh, Da Vinci Cosmo top, which doesn't hold as much water, so it's a nice uh, detailer for blending. I just want to touch some of these edges here. Let's see, I might be able to let that go, stand it back up. I like how it's looking. It's looking nice and and fresh. And the edges and all are looking spontaneous. I like that. And you can paint a lot of skies, and that won't happen. And believe me, I've done it. You start one, and it's just fail all the way around. These go pretty fast, and try again. Now, see where I added uh, an additional charge in here? There was more water than what was drying on the surface, and I created a background. A lot of times you can pick up some of that. Just be careful not to overbrush it. All right, we're getting to the drying danger stage where if I do much more to it here, I'm going to create back runs everywhere. So I think it's time to let that dry before we go on to the next step. Well, I interrupt this program to show you my fail. Boom. You, my lovely viewers, I know love for me to show you when I've made failures or mistakes. And look, when you do clouds, especially complex clouds, you're gonna have a lot of fails. I have tossed a lot of skies and this one was not going the way I wanted it to. I just thought I would show you that. I did a couple things different from what you've seen so far in this video. Rather than just a soft sky all over, I went back and picked up with tissue. Now I was fine with that. That kind of made some interesting looking edges. And then I thought I would totally dry it and then try to blend and paint each section of cloud in front of that and then blend it out. And it wasn't going the way I wanted it to. The cerulean blue picks up very easily and it was just looking real patchy and splotchy. Now looking at this later, I thought this actually is not that bad. I could probably salvage it. It would just have a little bit of a different look. The brushwork would look a little different and I have a few more hard edges and it would probably be acceptable, but it's not what I wanted this time. I wanted the more cottony edges and I wasn't getting them. So I think what I'll do is save this uh, as a study to do on my own and see if I can pull it together to an acceptable state. Different looking maybe, but acceptable. I also didn't like this swoosh here that dried like that. That looked ir very irregular. So I'm gonna see what I can do with it. But I really rate, if you paint a lot of complex skies, with a lot of interesting clouds, you're going to have fails. Count on it. All right, back to our regularly scheduled program. All right, this is nearly dry. It's still kind of damp, but I'm just going to wet it again with spray. So it doesn't have to be totally dry. It's dry enough that these won't back run. This time I'm going to re-wet the whole thing. I got my color mixed up. I'm going to use a mister. And again, we're going to saturate the whole thing. And the trick here is to protect these edges. So uh, you may have to have a tissue ready to stop that. Um, and you want to be able to let this all come up in here. And I haven't decided which brush I want to use. It's kind of more of a feel than it is a like a rule. That oval wash I think was a little much. I want to bring an edge in here. So and if you get an edge. You can soften it right away. Manage your flow and your edges with a little bit of tissue. And I'm more or less just floating these washes on here because I don't want to overbrush that paper, that wet paper under there. I really prefer doing cloudscapes with Arsh because it is so robust. But we'll make do. That's nice, like that. 
yes, I mean, some of these things turn out to be happy accidents. And you may do a lot of these before you land on something that's, that's great. I don't know that this will be great, but don't get frustrated and don't give up. I'll get a bit of a dry edge up there, so we'll soften it that way. I don't want to keep this edge here, so got my handy tissue. And you can just kind of work your way around like that. It's a great way to practice uh, water management, too. Just really is. And if you feel like you're getting too much water, but you've got a, an effect, you know, that you like and is working, um, before you go on to a, another section, just let it dry. I lost that neat little edge, but I was starting to get some patchiness there that I didn't want. Sprayed that. I got a danger of a backwash here. If I get one, I'm not too worried about it. I'll just uh, incorporate it somehow. But I'm still really pretty happy with uh, the mix of soft and hard edges going on here. All right, I think I'm going to have to let it dry again before I missed any other areas. I'm just getting too much water on the paper. All right, we're completely dry now. So let's re-wet it. <laughs> it is important to dry it because you start building up too much water and it just gets out of hand and you start creating backwashes and problems. And if I dry it, then I can come back to dry paper and spot wet it or mist it where I want to. So I'm going to work this corner a little bit here. Soften that edge. You can always use your hand if you want to uh, miss certain spots. But I think once you've got paint on the paper, it's just real important not to brush it much, you know, except where you're adding that little bit of color. You know, the the way to get these these edges to light up, as you get more into the solid part, the shadowed part of the cloud, uh, you have a darker core. And then as they slide behind another cloud, they get darker back there, and then they sort of enhance the edge that's in front of them. Probably the biggest challenge here is just uh, managing your wetness, but also understanding where your paper is, how, how wet your paper is, because it, as it's drying, it changes. And how the water moves and acts changes. And it finally gets to a point where if you add much, you're going into danger territory. You know, if you look at this reference, you just have to study uh, the chaos. <laughs> I mean, there's beauty and chaos at the same time, how the values, you know, ebb and flow. For the purposes of shading, ultimately, you're looking at solid shapes. 
Okay, everyone, I think we're going to stop it right here. I'm pretty happy with this. I could continue to fiddle with this for probably another hour. I really could deepen some of the core shadows even more. But we're going to go with this, and I thank everybody for watching. I really appreciate it. Thank you for liking and subscribing. And patrons, so appreciate your support on this channel. And we'll see everybody in the next video. Bye-bye.